The air we breathe has 21% oxygen. Water cannot hold that amount of oxygen. It can only hold about 1%. That's why it's important that we aerate the water for our plants and our fish. Hi, I'm Dave Zoe. For the past 50 years, I've been working taking care of patients with breathing problems. Now, I'm involved with looking at how we aerate our water for our plants and fish. Recently, my sister built a pond on a family farm in Iowa. And she came to me to help her with aerating the pond and maintaining a good, healthy um, aqua life for both plants and fish. So I have been learning about how do we take care of this, what do we use, what are the best methods. Over the next few videos, I said that we're going to cover a lot of stuff. We're going to cover information about aeration, about plants, about the fish, and how their metabolism differs. But for now, we're going to be looking just at the aeration of our pond and what is the best method. As I stated er earlier, 1% oxygen is all that water can hold. So this is an important factor to remember when we look at is oxygenation, is aeration in our pond necessary. As a respiratory therapist and also as an educator, we had to understand the dynamics of fluids, and gases. At the bedside, we give patients oxygen and we bubble that oxygen through water. Not to give oxygen to the water, but to pick up humidity. And in our ponds, in our aquariums, we need to have aeration so that we can deliver the oxygen to the water. The concepts of both are the same. And we can use those to better understand why aeration of our ponds is necessary. No matter what the size is of your pond, uh, your lake, um, the surface of that water is the only way oxygen can get into the water. And oxygen is necessary for good plant growth and getting rid of bad plant growth, and also to eliminate harmful chemicals, and also to maintain sufficient oxygenation for the fish. Now we can aid the surface diffusion of oxygen into the water by different methods. We can have a stream that percolates and moves water into the pond. We can have a uh, artificial waterfall or we can have a spraying fountain that sprays water up into the air and falls back down. But none of those work as efficient as a bubble diffusion oxygenator. And that's because what we're doing with a bubble uh, aerator is increasing the, the surface area of the air that gets into contact with the water. So if you think in terms of one big bubble, it may have a big surface area, but compared to a small bubble, but if you break that big bubble up into many, many small bubbles, well, you will have increased the surface area multifold. And it's that surface area that allows the oxygen to go from the air and diffuse into the water. Now, the other aspect is the length of time that the water and the air has in contact with each other. Now the fountains and the boiler makers and all oh, the surface, it only penetrates, it only has a very small level of contact with the water. If you put a bubbler 
only a few inches below the surface of the water. Those bubbles won't have much time to be in contact with the water. But if you drop that aerator, that bubbler, way down into your deepest hole, it will have much longer time with the water. Let's say the hole is 20 feet deep. That's uh, much longer than six inches from the top of the surface. And during that time, it will connect with the water releasing oxygen into it. How to cover bubble aerators. There's a lot of different types of bubble aerators that uh, can be made. Some are better than others. And so the very simplest would be to take a piece of PVC pipe, put a cap on it, and then drill some small holes, 16th of an inch or smaller. Put a connector on the opposite end, pressurize it, and you will have bubbles in coming out. Uh, but those bubbles may very well be fairly large. They might not be as large as a bubble coming from the bu tube itself, but they'll be larger than other types. The best device to make very small bubbles is actually the aeration stones that you usually see in some of the aquariums. Those create a very fine bubble and they now make those in larger sizes for ponds. So the other type is going to be your rubberized membrane. This membrane uh, can be either a disc or a tube, but when air is compressed on the opposite side, it pushes through small holes in the membrane. And it creates fairly small bubbles, maybe not quite as small as what you get out of an aeration stone, but fairly close. Uh, all right, now we are going to look at um, how do we make a diffusion bubbler. This one is, um, if you bought it uh, from uh, online or any uh, pond source, it would cost approximately 200 bucks, maybe a little less, but you can do it for well under half that price. And I like doing it because it allows me to see how this all works and how it all goes together. Now, to my side, you can see the di diagram of all the items you need. So let's take a close look down here on the real items, and I'll talk about each one of those as we go along. Now, what we want to do will be to... Uh, end up with uh, a uh, device that looks similar to the diagram that you now see next to me. So what we have is our parts. We have the four adapters. These are threaded adapters and they will end up screwing onto our uh, bubbler units. We have four of those, one for each of the bubbling uh, unit, whether you're using uh, the, uh, sa um, uh, the uh, sandstone bubblers or the rubberized membrane. We have here an adapter, one and a quarter inch, one and a quarter inch adapter, three quarter inch um, female on this side, and we have a nipple connector. These two go together and then we also have a six inch piece of, I mean a three inch piece of PVC and a cap. And that will snap together like this. We have six PVC pipes. These are approximately six inches long. And they are three quarter inch pipe. And then we also have the four-way T's, three-quarter inch on each one of these. And then, of course, we have two of those. So, what we want to do will be to assemble this so that it looks like the image that you see to my side here. Okay, 
Now, let's take, start building this. So let's take a, a T and place our six inch tubes in each one of those. And now you have a cross. And now put the other H there and add the other cross and now we're going to create the H and here we have a nice H. On each one of these pipes here we want to put one of our threaded connections. Then on this empty short piece here, if you're using a three-way in this, then you won't have an open pipe. I have an open one. I'm going to put in that short piece of pipe with the cap, and that way it diverts all the air going to just the bubblers. On the opposite end, we're going to put the uh, adapter that has the one quarter one and one quarter inch adapter the nipple connector and then the three quarter inch to the pipe and you notice how now everything fits in a nice H so before you go too much farther once you have this all fit and it's sitting flat glue all of these connections because you don't want this to be falling apart when it's in your deep well, your 20, 30 foot hole. You want it to stay together. Okay, once it's glued, then we're going to screw in your bubblers. And you want to screw them in nice and tight. Now, if, you're, if you've worked with uh, plumbing, you'll probably want to get out your Teflon tape. You really don't need that because if there's any leaking, that's okay. It's just one more leak that creates bubbles for your pond and to improve your aeration. Okay, so once you have this all together, it's going to look like this. And there it is. This is the basis of the bubbling system. Now, before you dump it into your pond, we'll come back in a few seconds and we're going to make a weight for this. And I'll talk about that in just a bit. Okay, now we're going to make the ballast the weights for our uh, uh, bubbler so that it doesn't float or shift around or break apart. And so what I've done is I've cut two one foot lengths of two inch PVC pipe. And I have four caps and we're going to put the caps on like on these. And of course, again, what we will do is glue them once we're done. Now, what we'll be doing is uh, preferably you can have uh, put cement in this, you could put sand, uh, you could put gravel, any of those type of things. Uh, just something to make it heavy and weight it down. Um, I would suggest you do that after you uh, uh, end up um, assembling everything together. So what we'll do is first measure where do we want to put some hooks and this is what we're going to be using. So um, let me uh, take this over and we're going to bring the H block back and here's the H and what we're going to do is place this pipe underneath and you can measure it, you can guesstimate it, doesn't matter. But what we want to do is mark off where we want to put this, the uh, hooks. 
Okay, so then we're just simply going to take our drill and drill a nice hole in the top. And my drill build is a little bit small, so I'm rounding out the hole a little bit more just by moving it side to side a bit. Okay. And now we can uh, take this and we can move this, uh, put the, the hooks in it. Now you can use these hooks, which are uh, a screw on the end, or you could go and buy a little more expensive one, which has a bolt. Just make sure it goes all the way through so that you can uh, tighten up the bolt from the opposite side. Um, I was too cheap for that. So I'm just going to put this in and um, if it's a bit tight that's okay. Uh, I will tighten it down with my vice grips and eventually we're going to end up like this. Okay, Two hooks. Now um, if you've assembled and glued your block together, then you're going to want to get the uh, little hooks, the uh, uh, hooks that have a, a bolt or not on the inside, in, on the opposite side so that you can tighten it down here. Uh, I did not, and thankfully I, I will just simply take this apart and then simply take my bolts through, I mean uh, put my pipe through here and then once I have this all together like that then I will be able to fill this pipe with, um, with sand or cement and then glue it all back together. So your completed bubble uh, diffuser it should look like this. You have four bubblers, you have two weights, a connection for your pressure hose, and what I've done is I put a buoy on there. When you drop it into your pond, you'll want to make sure you have a good polypropylene rope tied onto it. I would suggest instead of one place, maybe several, and make it long enough so the buoy will float in that at the end of each season or beginning, uh, or if you ever need to do any maintenance on it, you can easily locate it by the buoy and then pull it up for repair. That completes this video on making your own bubble diffusion oxygenator for your pond. Thank you. <clears throat>